So the topic for today's class is commissioning, decommissioning and ACL. So these are the three topics which we will be exploring in today's class. So let's start the class with the agenda. The agenda for today's class is role of include and exclude file. Entry for include and exclude file. What is commissioning? How to commission a new node? What is decommissioning? How to decommission an existing node? What is ACL? Why do we need ACL? Modify coreside.xml Role of Hadoop policy.xml and refresh service ACL. This is the agenda for today's class. So we'll be starting with the first one that is role of include and exclude file. We have many configuration files, right? When we install Hadoop, we talked about core site, HDFS site, MapRed site. When we install Hadoop on multiple machines, we talked about two more configuration files, masters and slaves. And today, when we will talk about commissioning and decommissioning, we have two more configuration files. But the difference between these configuration files and the earlier one is that earlier configuration files were already available in the conf directory, right? And these include and exclude, we need to create. So we'll go to the conf directory of Hadoop. We will right click, create new document. And this way we can create two files, include and exclude. As the name indicates that include file contains the list of nodes which are allowed to connect to master machine. And on the other hand, exclude file contains the list of nodes which are supposed to be decommissioned. So commissioning means adding a new machine to the cluster. The technical name is commissioning. And similarly, when you are removing a machine from a running Hadoop cluster, technically it is known as decommissioning. So we have two files, include and exclude. And you may be thinking that if the name is available in both the files, that would be a contradicting scenario, right? Because one file is saying that it's including the machine in the cluster and exclude file says that it is supposed to be decommissioned. That means it will be removed from the cluster shortly. So when the name is available in both the files, that's not a contradicting scenario. Let me explain you why. Because when you are removing any machine from the cluster, you cannot directly shut the machine down. You have to make sure that this machine, whatever blocks it is containing, we have to copy those blocks to alternate machines. Right? We are removing the machine from the cluster does not mean that we will be losing our data. Absolutely not. We have to move the data to some alternate machine. Then only we can remove this machine from the cluster. So for that movement of data to some alternate machine, we still need the connectivity with the name node. That's why when the name is available in both the files, it can connect to master machine, but it cannot participate in storage or processing. Once you will add the name to exclude file, once you have declared that this machine will be removed from the cluster, after that, any copy from local or any copy to local or execution of Hadoop job, these things will not be happening on that system. That system will do only one thing, that is moving of data from that system to alternate system. That's all. And once done, it can leave the cluster. So friends, this is about include and exclude file, which will be playing their important role while commissioning and decommissioning the node. So moving to the next slide, entry for include file and exclude file. Since we are creating these files, these files were not already available. What we will do is we need to add these two properties inside HDFS site.xml. So the name is dfs.host and the value of the property is 
स्लैस होम स्लैस नीरज लोकल नेस्टर होम इन साइड दैट हडूप वन पॉइंट टू पॉइंट वन इन साइड दैट कॉन एंड इन साइड दैट इंक्लूड इफ यू वॉन्ट यू कैन इवन क्रिएट दिस इंक्लूड एंड एक्सक्लूड फाइल एट सम अदर अदर लोकेशन एज वेल मे बी डेस्क टॉप डायरेक्टरी और एनी अदर डायरेक्टरी बट सिंस दिस इज ए कॉन्फिगेशन फाइल एंड आई वॉन्ट टू कीप ऑल हडूप कॉन्फिगेशन फाइल एट द सेम प्लेस and that's why i am creating include and exclude file inside conf directory of hadoop and i am giving the path accordingly as you can see so the description of this uh, first property you can see names a file that contains a list of hosts which are permitted to connect to the name node the full path name of the file must be specified if the value is empty all hosts are permitted till now we did not define this property right and you know that properties are already defined in default file we are only redefining in site file if you will go to the default file hdfs default and if you will search for this property dfs.host then you will find the value for this property as blank and that's what is written in the description if the value is empty all hosts are permitted that's why even when we were not using this uh, include file it was running fine because at that time all the machines are included in the cluster similarly you can have a look at the second property that is uh, dfs dot hosts dot exclude so this property uh, is talking about the machines machines names which are supposed to be decommissioned which will be excluded from the cluster sorting not right now so i have given the value that is the complete path of exclude file and then the description names a file that contains a list of hosts which are not permitted to connect to the name node the full path name of the file must be specified if the value is empty no hosts are excluded okay so the same thing applicable for second property if you will go to default file hdfs default and search for this property you will find the value of this property as uh, blank and that's why no hosts are excluded so till now we were not using include or exclude file neither we had defined this property so it was fine but now when we are talking about commissioning and decommissioning include and exclude file will be required so this way you can define these properties in hdfs site.xml file the next slide is what is commissioning so hadoop is scalable we all know as per the requirement we can increase or decrease the number of nodes in a hadoop cluster so adding a new machine or you can say node to hadoop cluster is known as commissioning commissioning is the technical term so commissioning a new node will increase the storage and processing capacity of hadoop cluster that's true earlier suppose you had 10 machines so your data data was separated and stored among 10 machines only <clears throat> and similarly the jobs mapdus jobs you were executing those were running parallelly on those 10 machines now maybe you have some limited storage and you want to store more data or maybe the jobs you are executing are taking much time in any of the scenario you can plan that okay let me add more machine to the cluster so we can do that and that's what's the message of the last point that commissioning a new node will increase the storage and processing capacity of hadoop cluster so now you will be able to load more data and you will be able to process your data parallelly on 15 machine instead of 10 so when 15 machines are processing your data it will be taking lesser time when your only 10 machines were processing your data okay so let's move to the next uh, slide and we'll talk about the steps which are involved in commissioning 
So the first step is add the IP address or host name of the new node to the include file. Because until or unless you will not add the name to the include file, it will not be able to communicate to the name node. And that's very important thing, right? Because slave machine as it's on does not have any capability of taking any decision or storing anything or processing anything. It receives the required instruction from master and it's simply following that. So connectivity with master is absolutely required. <coughs> now there is one important thing that when we are adding this uh, IP address or uh, host name to the include file before that your machine should be ready. Ready means this should have the same operating system as other operating system. It should have the same username as other operating system. And one more thing, you can say that um, the Java should be installed, passwordless SSH must, first of all SSH should be installed and then passwordless SSH must be established between master and newly added slave and from newly added slave to master. And one more thing, the complete Hadoop setup, which we copied on all the machines, right? The same setup should be copied to this newly added system as well. So I have not written these things anywhere, but it's obvious. If you are planning to add any machine to the cluster, then these things should be there. Java should be there, SSH should be there, passwordless SSH should be there, and the Hadoop setup. After that, the first step add the IP address or the host name to the include file. And when you are making any change, when your Hadoop is running, those changes are not automatically reflected. When you do start all.sh, at that point of time, your master loads all the files. Core site, HDFS site, MapRed site, master, slaves, include, exclude, everything. Right? But in between you are making any change. When you started your Hadoop, at that point of time, include file contain 10 names only. Slave 1, Slave 2, Slave 3, till Slave 10. And now, you have added 5 more names. Slave 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. First of all, whenever you are adding these new names, these names should be declared in host file, right? Otherwise, you cannot randomly give any number. Only when you have given some name in host file, then only you can use those names so that we don't have to struggle with IP addresses. Okay, so you have added the five names to include file, that's fine. But those will not be automatically reflected. So you need to intimate name node and job tracker regarding this change. So you can see this, update the name node with the new set of permitted nodes using below command. And the command is dot slash hadoop dfs admin hyphen refresh nodes this command will intimate name node that there is a change in include or exclude file please pick the latest changes and name node will again reload your include or exclude file similarly you need to intimate job tracker as well because job tracker uh, it, it is still considering that there are only 10 machines in the cluster so it's distributing your jobs among 10 machines only. So if you are planning to add more machine, you need to intimate job tracker as well. So the command is dot slash hadoop mr admin hyphen refresh nodes. This command will intimate uh, job tracker that we have added or we have modified include or exclude file. So it will pick the changes and it will also behave accordingly. After that, Update the slave file with the new nodes so that they are included in future operations performed by Hadoop control scripts. Hadoop control scripts are start all.sh and stop all.sh and all that. Your slave files still contain 10 names, right? Slave 1, 2, 3 till slave 10. And the next time you will do start all.sh or stop all.sh, then master machine will give you the instruction to those 10 machines only. In case you want that master machine should give instruction to 15 machines, so add those five names, slave 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 to the slaves file. So we can do that. After that, start the new data node. 
I mean when you did start all dot sh at that point of time those 10 machines were started I mean Hadoop were started on those those 10 machines now the five machines which we have recently added Hadoop is not running on that right so first time I mean only for this time what we will do is we need to start the required services manually you will go to slave 11 open the terminal go to the bin directory of Hadoop and you will type dot slash Hadoop daemon dot sh space start space data node usually we do start all dot sh and stop all dot sh right but sometimes we may have to start or stop a specific service so we can do this with the help of this command so the first command will start data node and second command dot slash Hadoop hyphen daemon dot sh start task tracker And you know these are the two uh, slave services, right? Data node and task tracker. So these two services will start on slave 11. Similarly, you will go to slave 12, 13, 14, and 15, and will be starting these two services. These two services will start communicating with their master counterpart. Data node will start communicating with the name node, and that that would be possible because your name is there in include file, right? If your name is not there in include file and you are simply uh, you can say copying the setup of Hadoop and starting the services you can start the services no one is stopping you but those services will not be able to communicate with the name node those machine will never become the part of your Hadoop cluster that's the point that's why the name of the machine newly added machine should be there into the include file okay after that, check that the new data nodes and task tracker appear in web UI or not. That localhost colon 50070. We usually open on open on local machine, right? But when you are running Hadoop on multiple machine, we usually don't use localhost. Open the browser and write master machine name. So HTTP colon double slash master colon 50070. It will display the detail about all your machines including your newly added machines earlier it was displaying live nodes is equal to 10 dead nodes is equal to 0 right this time it should display live nodes is equal to 15 and if you will click on the link live nodes it will display either the IP or the name on the web page so if you can see slave 11 12 13 14 15 on the web page that simply means that you have successfully commissioned a single or multiple nodes to the running Hadoop cluster. So friends you can uh, have a look at these uh, steps and in case you have any doubt you can ask me. So friends this was all about commissioning. Let's move to the next slide. What is decommissioning? So decommissioning is uh, opposite of commissioning. Sometime you have uh, the Hadoop cluster and there are many machines. Maybe your project is over and now you are saying that I don't need all the machines. Maybe we can remove few machines from the cluster. So whenever required we can uh, remove the machine from running Hadoop cluster. The data is copied to alternate node before this node leaves cluster. That's very important. Thing. As we discussed earlier that removing the machine from the cluster does not mean that we will be losing our data. Data will not be lost. We will be rather moving the data to some alternate machine and then only we will remove this machine from the cluster. So removing an existing machine from Hadoop cluster is known as decommissioning. And decommissioning a node from cluster will decrease the storage and processing capacity of Hadoop cluster. I mean that's obvious right? Earlier you have 10 machines. The jobs you were executing were distributed among 10 machines. But now, suppose you have removed uh, 6 machines from the cluster. Only 4 machines are there. If you will execute any job now, that job will be distributed among only 4 machines. And definitely 4 machines will take more time to complete the job as compared to 10 machines. So you should understand this thing. And when you say that, yes, I know. I understand this but still I don't need 10 machine in my cluster 
I want to remove the machine from my cluster. If that is the case, we are here. We can help you to remove the machine from your cluster. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the steps involved in uh, decommissioning. The first step is add the IP address or host name of nodes to be decommissioned to the exclude file. You have decided that starting from slave 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, these 10 machines or maybe any random, random machines, not in sequence, maybe slave 1, slave 3, slave 5, slave 8, 9, 10. These six machines you want to remove from the cluster. We can do that. So first of all, add the IP address or host name to the exclude file. And do not update the include file at this time. Very important thing. You may be thinking that these machines are not part of our cluster. So why do we keep their name in include file? I mean, we will remove the name from include file. That's true, but not right now. The reason being is if I will remove the name right now, these machines will not be able to communicate with the name node, right? And without communicating to name node, there is no way to move the data to existing uh, from existing machine to alternate machine. Because slave machine does not have any capability or any idea about any other slave machine. Only name node can do that activity. Only name node can give instruction to one machine, maybe slave and uh, 10, that whatever blocks you have, please copy it on slave 6 which will be still part of your Hadoop cluster. <clears throat> so connectivity is required. That's why on very first slide we explored that when the name is available in include file as well as in exclude file, that's a valid scenario. It's not a contradicting scenario. So your name of six machine are already there in include file and we are adding the name to the exclude file as well. So at present, your six machines names are available in both the files. And that's absolutely fine. <clears throat> After this, update the name node with the new set of permitted nodes using below command. As we discussed earlier that whenever you are making any change in include file or exclude file on the go, those changes are not automatically reflected. We need to intimate name node. Because if you will not intimate name node, and name node has no idea that you are removing six machines from the cluster. You know what will happen? If someone is doing copy from local. So maybe name node will redirect your request to the slave eight or slave nine or slave 10. Because name node does not have any idea that you are removing these machines from the cluster. So on the one side, we are planning to move the data from those machines to the alternate machines, right? And on the other side, Name node is sending more data to those machines. That's not a good idea, right? So that's why we need to intimate name node and job tracker that we are planning to remove these machines so that name node and job tracker behaves accordingly. So the same command is there as we execute for commissioning. The commands are dot slash Hadoop DFS admin hyphen refresh nodes and dot slash Hadoop MR admin hyphen refresh nodes. So now name node and job tracker both will be aware that six machines are under decommissioning. Six machines will be removed from the cluster shortly. After doing this step, Hadoop is smart enough that it will start copying the blocks. We will not do that manually. That's not required. Adding the name to the exclude file and simply intimating name node is sufficient. <clears throat> now Hadoop will start copying the blocks to other data nodes in the cluster. The machines which will be still part of a cluster, those machines will be, you can say, holding your data now. So depending upon your, you can say, data size and depending upon the number of machines in the cluster which you are decommissioning, it will take some time. So you can just wait, you can just uh, monitor on the browser. You can open the browser and you can see, you will open this page, master colon 50070. <clears throat> and check whether the admin state has changed to decommissioning in progress. So let me remind you, when we open this page 50070, there are many things displayed, right? 
I mean, on which machine name node is running, how many files, how many directories, what is the total capacity and all that. Along with all these things, there are details about live nodes is equal to this, dead node is equal to this. And at the below, at the bottom, we have one more thing, decommissioning nodes. When we opened that phase at that time, I told you that this decommissioning nodes will be exploring in a separate class. So today is the class. Out of 10, 6 machines are under decommissioning. You can simply open this 50070 page. You will find the link decommissioning nodes. Click on that. And you will find the detail. All those names, all those machines. Slave 1, slave 3, slave 5, slave 8, 9, 10. These names will be there which because those are under decommissioning and with every every system you will find the current status in the beginning the current status of all the machines will be decommissioning in progress that means the movement of data from these machine to alternate machine is in progress <clears throat> once your data will be come data copying process will be completed then the state will change from decommissioning in progress to decommissioned till then you have to monitor it, you have to wait. So when all the data nodes report their state as decommissioned, all six machines are showing now decommissioned, then all the blocks have been replicated. That means these machines are neither participating in storage, whatever data was there that has been moved to alternate machine, and neither this machine is participating in the processing. So it's, it's safe now. We can shut down these decommissioned nodes. We can do that. Okay, after this, remove the nodes from the include file. Very important thing. Otherwise, tomorrow someone will start the services on this machine. This machine will start communicating with the name node and name is already there in the include file, right? So, they will again start communicating. And we don't want that. We don't want that this machine ever try to con uh, connect to our name node. If they want to become the part of our cluster, they should come through the commissioning process, right? That's why we will remove the name from include file and we will run dot slash hadoop dfs admin hyphen refresh nodes. So that name node is aware that now include file does not contain 10 names. Now it contain only 4 names. And only these 4 names, 4 machine should be able to communicate with name node. No, not any other machine. <clears throat> Apart from include file, we will even remove the uh, nodes from slaves file as well. Otherwise, the next time you will do start all, name node will again try to start the required services on those old machines as well, which are not required, which are not part of our Hadoop cluster now. So we'll remove the six name from slave file and slave file should also contain only four names. So next time when you will do start all or stop all, master machine will connect to only those four machines and give the required instruction for storing stuff for starting or stopping of Hadoop. So this way you have successfully decommissioned a single or multiple nodes from the Hadoop cluster. So you can have a quick quick look at these steps once again and in case you have any doubt you can ask me. So friends these uh, this is all about uh, how to decommission a single or multiple nodes from the cluster. We are moving to the third topic for today and that is ACL. So ACL first of all stands for access control list. The name is meaningful right access control list a list using which we can control the access. So the ACL contains uh, security related information and ACL contains list of authorized users and groups who can perform specific activity on Hadoop cluster. There are many team members in the team, right? And everyone is not having the same experience, same expertise, same capability. And we cannot allow everyone to do any activity on Hadoop cluster, right? So we must maintain some security, some authorization in Hadoop. So Hadoop does not allow the users to perform activity who are not part of ACL. If someone I does not have the access to submit a job, suppose, and he or she is trying to submit the job. 
first of all the job will not be submitted and you will get some error that as per security policy you are not allowed to submit the job and this is Adobe ad admins responsibility managing ACL deciding which user can do which activity is completely Hadoop admin activity okay so let's move to the next uh, slide why do we need ACL we are running in the third week of training right and till now we haven't talked about the security but everything was running fine right because by default Hadoop is not secure there's a default setting for each and everything so the default behavior of Hadoop is not secure that means all users are same anyone can do any activity so without ACL any user can perform anything on Hadoop and a small command can delete everything from HDFS you can have a look dot slash Hadoop FS hyphen RMR root RMR means removing recursively and starting from root so it will start from root it will keep on deleting the things it will encounter some subdirectory it will enter into subdirectory and it will delete their contents as well and if those subdirectory further contain subdirectory it will keep on going deeper and deeper and will be deleting everything <clears throat> so that's not a good idea right we cannot allow everyone to do everything so ACL will help us to control the access of different users to Hadoop and using ACL we can make our Hadoop secure so first of all whenever we want to change the default setting you know what we need to do we need to redefine some property in our site file so we'll move to the next slide and you can have a look add the following property to core site or decimal to enable security in Hadoop so you can see the name of the property Hadoop.security.authorization the name is meaningful right? and the value is true if you will go to core default.xml and if you will open uh, if you will search for this property Hadoop.security.authorization you will find the value of this property as false if you want I can show you just hold on I will go to my home directory then I will go to local cluster home I will go to my Hadoop source and core yes I have this core default.xml I will open in text editor and I will search for that property I will search for that I think security is something right security yes you can see this this one Hadoop dot security dot authorization the value is false that's the default behavior and the description is is service level authorization enabled and if you want to change it if you want to enable the security what you need to do is you need to copy this property from here and paste into the site specific file so we are copying from core default so we will be pasting into core site so you can see this into core site you can uh, copy this uh, property and make this value as true this way you can enable the security in Hadoop so we have enabled the security that's fine but just by enabling the security we will not get the authorization right because we have not decided which user can do what activity we have to decide that as well so what we will do is we have a file that is also available in the conf directory that is Hadoop policy dot XML this file is available inside the conf directory let me show you I will go to the conf directory of Hadoop so local cluster home Hadoop conf directory and Hadoop policy yes it's there I will right click and open with the text editor 
so this file contains many uh, many properties along with their value along with their detailed description you can have a look security dot job dot submission dot protocol dot acl quite lengthy name right but the name is meaningful it's talking about the security which is related to job submission protocol and you can notice that the value of this property is star right and you can see the last line a special value of star means all users are allowed and it's it's not for only this property you can have a look at every property if you will go up the value of above property is star and the last line is same a special value of star means all users are allowed so we have enabled the security that's fine but what's the benefit of that even after enabling the security you are allowing everyone you are having the star in the value and star means everyone is allowed so we have to change this as well there are many properties you can read the description of every property and whatever property you find relevant you find interesting you see that it does yes it's a good property and it's a useful let's use that okay so let me come back to pdf we'll explore one one property in much more detail try to understand what's the purpose of that you can see this security dot sub job dot submission dot protocol dot acl the value star the description is acl for job submission protocol used by job clients like to communicate with job tracker for job submission and killing etc that means who can submit the job and who can kill the job that particular activity is decided here who can do that so the acl is a comma separated list of user and group names the user and group name group list is separated by a blank for example ravi comma swati ravi is one user swati is another user and these two user names are separated by a comma as you can see similarly we have a comma separated list of uh, groups as well as you can see developers comma testers and these two list comma separated name list and comma separated group list is separated by a space you can notice that so what does that mean this mean that ravi swati all the members of developers group and all the members of testers group can submit or kill the job apart from these guys i mean apart from ravi and swati and who are neither the part of developers and testers group those guys cannot submit the job even if they will try they will get the error they will get the exception on the terminal but they won't be able to submit the job and now the last line a special value of star means all users are allowed so writing these names ravi swati developers testers in the description will not help this is just for your reading purpose just for your understanding purpose if you want to enable it if you want to use it you have to remove the star from the value and over there you will write this ravi comma swati space developers comma testers then only this property will be you can say effective and similarly you, there are many more properties you can have a look at those properties and if you find something interesting something useful you can remove the star from that properties value and provide the comma separated list of username and group name okay so this is uh, hadoop policy.xml moving to the next slide refreshing service acl just like when we were making any change in include and exclude file right and after that we had to intimate name node and job tracker regarding those changes similarly when you are making any change in hadoop policy.xml even that will not be reflected immediately because when you did start all.sh at that point of time hadoop has loaded its content and it's behaving accordingly maybe your name was not there in hadoop policy.xml earlier when you started hadoop and now you have added the name added your name but still 
Hadoop will not allow you to submit the job. You know why? Because whatever change you made, your name is also added to the list now. But that information is not updated with name node. And that's why it will not allow you to submit the job. So whenever you make any change, we have to execute this command. As you can see, dot slash Hadoop DFS admin hyphen refresh service ACL. S of service and A of ACL is capital. This command will be refreshing the list. It will intimate name node that there is a change in Hadoop version to Teximal. It will load the contents again, updated contents, and it will behave accordingly. So you can even test this thing on your single machine Hadoop cluster. We don't need multiple machines for that. First of all, enable the security. Second thing is remove start and write your name. Suppose your name is Harsha. So write Harsha inside the, the value. Write your username, not your name. Okay. After writing your username, execute this command dot slash Hadoop DFS admin hyphen refresh service SEL and try to submit the job. Earlier you were able to submit the job because everyone was allowed, right? This time you are able to submit the job because as per security policy, your name is there. You are allowed to submit the job. After that, remove your name, your username from this uh, Hadoop policy to XML and write something different. Maybe ABC. Only ABC user is allowed to submit the job. No one else. And now again, refresh the service ACL. And after that, if you will again try to execute a word count, maybe any other MapReduce program, you will not be able to do that. Because as per security policy, only ABC user is allowed to submit the job. And your username is not ABC. Your username is Harsha. In that case, you will not be allowed to submit the job. So this way you can uh, enable the security and uh, by changing Hadoop policy to XML, you can use uh, whatever security you want to use. <coughs> so friends, this was all about ACL access control list. And with this slide, we are done for the day.